God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me put to be, be put to shame. Nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. But shame will come to those who are treacherous without cause. Show me, Lord. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. Buenos días. Uh, voy a leer de Salmos, capítulo 25, versículos 1 a 5. A ti, Señor, elevo mi alma. Mi Dios, en ti confío. No permitirás que, yo, que sea yo humillado. No dejes que mis enemigos se burlen de mí. Quien en ti pone su esperanza jamás será avergonzado. Pero quedarán en vergüenza los que traicionan, traicionan sin razón. Señor, hazme conocer tus caminos. Muéstrame tus sendas. Encamíname en tu verdad. Enséñame. Tú eres mi Dios y Salvador. En ti pongo mi esperanza todo el día.
parts. Please listen as these five parts are woven together to create a masterpiece. We, perform, we will perform the selection called the grasshopper.
the boys and girls to know that there's always a giant on the inside, but guess what? We have God and the Holy Spirit that's going to lead them and guide them in the way that they need to go. So we just got to teach them to rely on the Holy Spirit. Rise up above those giants. Hallelujah. 
God has blessed us again and he has afforded us another fourth Sunday where youth and young people just take over the church. We need youth and young people. We need children. We need babies. We, we need young folk. Believe it or not, you're moving off the scene. God is getting ready to move you from here. Just keep waking up in the morning. Just say, just keep, keep saying good morning. And sooner or later, you're going to be out of here. The wise writer says it like this. He says, life is but a vapor. Here for a moment and it is gone. You gotta make the best of what you have because life is nothing but a vapor. Amen. So we're glad we have young folk who can carry on church. Amen? Amen. Young people who can take it from one generation to the other that can rise up and, and make a difference in the world in which we we live. We serve the awesome God and God has, has blessed us one more time. Thank you, young people. Thank you. I used to be young. But now I'm old. But I, like David, have come to the conclusion I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed of the righteous buried for bread. We have to make sure we keep introducing young people to righteousness, to godliness, and making sure that they know Thank you, Sister Davis. Thank you for those who are who are in direction of these young people. Thank you, young people, and thank you, parents and neighbors and friends and grandparents and, uh, for putting your energy in them. Amen. We have to put energy into young folk. They have a whole lot of energy, and if we don't put the right energy in them, the devil will make sure he will give them something to do. And he is good at his job. He is, the devil is just excellent at his job. The question is, are you excellent at what God has called you to do? Are you excellent at what God has called you to do? Let me call your attention to Ecclesiastic uh, chapter 12. Ecclesiastic chapter 12. In the Old Testament, the book is Ecclesiastic. Ecclesiastics. Chapter 12, verse number 1. When I do one verse, I'm usually going to preach the whole text. Amen? Amen. We got to 1 o'clock before the next church service starts. So, so preach it all, Reverend. Preach it all. Preach it all. No one said a mumbling word. I mean, not, not, I heard the mosquito fly in here and hit the wall, fall to the floor. I heard it. Because no one was saying, a mumbling word. Even Big C with his voice didn't say a mumbling word. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter one, chapter 12, verse number 1. When you found it, you will discover these words. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Before the difficult times or difficult days come. And the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. I want to talk about honor your creator. Honor your creator. Honor your creator. Honor your creator. The other day we were riding in the park and we stopped to get a drink of water. And in the temperatures of today, you got to make sure that you stop to drink some water. And while we stopped to drink some water, we were there and we saw this chip or piece of food on the ground. And this piece of food on the ground was moving. It was moving on top of the ground. It was moving on the cement. This cracker or this chip, whatever the food was, it was actually moving. It wasn't moving back and forth. It was moving forth and it was moving all at one time. This chip, an animated object, this chip that had no heartbeat, this cracker was moving on the ground. 
And when the cracker got to the edge of the cement slab, all of a sudden, that cracker fell to the ground. But after it fell to the ground, it began to move throughout the grass. And it was always moving in one direction. When you look at it very closely, we discovered that there were some ants. About a zillion of them. And they were moving in unison. Maybe this cracker doesn't mean much to you, but, but this cracker spoke volumes to me. The cracker didn't have the sense of rejecting this movement. The cracker did not have the sense of telling the, the ants to leave me alone. The ants were not eating the cracker. The ants was not fighting over the cracker. The ants were moving the cracker to their destination, and they wouldn't even swap. The Bible, the wise writer says, consider the ants and how they store up food for the winter. These ants ought to teach us something. These ants were doing just what their creator made them to do. Just what their creator created them to do. Just what their creator had summoned them to do. Just what their creator had selected them to do. There was no backbiting. I didn't see one pull off in protest. I didn't hear them arguing about it. They had their head under that cracker and they were on top of the cracker. They were up around the cracker and they were moving this cracker. And all of us on the trail just stopped and looked at this moving cracker. And this cracker did not begin to fall off the cliff. It fell off the cliff in one single movement. It's because the ants were on one accord. The ants had the same purpose. The ants had the same vision. And when the ants got to the ant bed, they just slowly made a hole in the ground so they could take the cracker down to their creed. These ants knew where their bread in the country, we would say, he knows which side his bread burns on. These ants took that whole cracker, made a hole in the top of the ground, and they carried it down. They didn't break it up. They didn't destroy it. These ants were in unison and they did what they did all in one accord. What if the church? What if the community? What if Congress was all on one accord? What if spouses? What if siblings? What else teams were all on one accord? No ant said that I am the superstar for the day. Every ant had its end of the bargain taken care of. Every ant had their portion of the chip and, and they didn't worry about whether I'm going to set some aside for tomorrow or whether it's going to be enough for me. Because the ants knew that their creator was going to take care of them. In the text, the wise writer writes the book of Ecclesiastes. And throughout the book, he talks about being wise. He talks about making good, sound decisions. He talks about making sure that you do not do crazy stuff with your life. Throughout, throughout the book, throughout the book of Ecclesiastes, throughout the book of Ecclesiastes, the wise writer says that you need to not only have knowledge, but you need to know what to do with that knowledge. All right, all right. You've heard before of the phrase, an educated fool. Yeah. It means that a person has a great education, mm -hmm. an expensive education, mm -hmm. 
but they have not wisdom with them. I just want to drop this in your spirit. Right now, we have a superintendent at HIFD. He has a doctorate degree, but he's just an educated fool. He has turned in a matter of days, yeah, yeah, yeah. not months. He has turned a system that was halfway decent uh -huh. mm -hmm. upside down. Yes, and surely, surely some teachers are, are not teaching for the sake of children. Some people are not pouring their lives into children. It, it's, it's a matter of handling it the right way so everybody can succeed. I have come to the conclusion that he cares nothing about our children. He and the governor have their own little play put in. And they want it their way when they get it, how they get it. They're willing to tear up the whole cartwheel in order for them to have it their way. They like little children on the playground, playing with their stuff. And if the merry go around going the right way, then they want to make sure it goes the other way. And we have allowed them to separate us. We have allowed politicians to cause division among us. But God has called us, the church, to formulate a standard and the text declares that our standard lies in our children. How we treat them, how we acknowledge them, how we love them, and for God's sake, what we teach them. In your spare time, go around, go back and read Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6 tells us, whatever you do, write the word of God on your children's forehead. Put it in their brains. Write it on the doorpost so they can see it on their way out. Deuteronomy chapter 6 declares, bring your child up in the nourishment and admonition of the Lord. Don't let them raise themselves any old kind of way. One fellow said to me, we don't, we don't tell our children how to handle religion. Well, I'm Methodist. She's Catholic, so we don't let them, we don't tell them how to handle it. We just let them decide on their own. A child left to his or herself leads to destruction. You have to coach them. You have to tell them. And many times, you have to tell them over and over and over again. Let me tell you, your two-year-old, your one-year-old knows the latest rap song. And it's because it has been indoctrinated in their spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. And the rapper knows what he's doing. He's saying it over and over and over again. They only have three lines. Yeah. <laughs> and they spend five minutes talking those same three lines. And so it goes and penetrates in the heart and in the mind of the child. And that child comes out boom, 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 comes out repeating the same words as the rapper and don't know his ABCs. All right, all right. Cannot count to ten. But he or she can tell you what the rapper has said. We are losing our children in groves. Some of them being senselessly killed. Some of them have been taught the wrong stuff. Some of them have been left to raise their own selves. And when you get to a point where you want to be your child's friend, then let me tell you, you have a serious problem. Text the class in your youth. Remember your creator. We have to tell our children, and, and that's why we want to make sure that every child that walks up on this campus get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Disrespect comes from a lack of God. Talking back comes from a lack of God. You see, y'all can't do what my mom and daddy used to do. They had the fear of God in us. We did not talk back. We better not put a frown in our faces. We better not act like we are we are not listening. And for God's sake, we better not mouth off. 
But now y'all live on a new regime. You live on a new regime and, and you have things that call time out. You have things that, that tell you that you can count to five and they better get it right. You still count and you're on ten and you've done nothing. The text says the only cure to the shenanigan that we are in is to teach children God's way. He says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth. This word remember in the original Hebrew means to be mindful. It means to recognize who God is. It means to recount. The psalmist teaches us that we ought to count our blessings and name them one by one. And everybody in the room would say, oh, I know God is good because he woke me up this morning. Let me tell you, God did more than wake you up this morning. He kept you all night while the burglars were burglarizing. He kept you all night while the thieves were, were stealing. He kept you all night while somebody was ushering into ICU that didn't know if they were in the world or not. God kept your mind. Matter of fact, some of y'all may have gotten into some disputes this week. And you, you would have called up the old man or the old woman to handle your business. But because God is in your heart, you let him make it. I just want to tell you that the best revenge is no revenge. Because God prepares a table before your enemies. He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. What that means, you need to put your long flowing robe on. You need to put your book brother's suit on. You need to put your Stacy Adams shoes on because you got a banquet to go to. God is preparing a table in your presence. That's why children can't expect their parents to be their friends. Because I'm on a mission. Parents, you're on a mission. You got to put Jesus in these children's lives. Amen. If you don't put Jesus in it, the devil will put hell in it. If you don't put Jesus in them, then God has a way of taking his hands off them. The text says, remember. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Remember. This word remember means to keep it in mind. To mark it. To make a big deal of it. God is not the man upstairs. He's not my big buddy. He's not the big boss man. He is God and there's no one like him. Amen. He's God by himself. Amen. Don't get too friendly. Don't get too comfortable with who God is. Simply because he is just God. The Bible, the Bible says, remember now the creator. Remember now is what it now means at your present state. At your present time, remember it immediately. In other words, we can't we can't wait till we get out of here to talk about remembering God. We can't wait till we get old. Some folk do all their dirt, hang out anywhere with anybody, do anything they want to do, and then when they get old and broke down, they won't come to God. Yeah, yeah. Statistics says that when you get 65 years old, the increase of, of church and the increase of godliness goes up when, when people get 65. They've been rascals all their lives. They've done everything under the sun. They misuse people. And all of a sudden, they're good. You see it all the time when you see murderers and, and killers and and they go to court. Now they in wheelchairs. And, and now they, they are so frail. And, and they want people to feel sorry for them. Mm. Police officer in, in Texas decided that every black woman that he arrested, he was going to rape. Mm. He raped some 14 women. Mm. Then when he get to court, he crying like a baby. If I was a judge, I'd say, shut up. You don't deserve the crime. You were big and bad as long as you had a, a gun, as long as you had a bag, as long as you
you had a uniform, you were big and bad, and you were taking advantage of women, and now you crying like a baby. Shut up! You don't deserve the tears that fall from your eyes. But what if somebody had taught him the way of the Lord? What if somebody would have taught him to respect all of mankind? What if somebody had told him when you approach a woman, you need to approach that woman as you would want a man to approach your daughter, approach your mama, or you need to make sure you approach women with a heart for God? Don't cry. There ain't no time to cry now. Go and take your 60 years with pride. You did it with pride. Okay. You act the fool, and you didn't just do one time. You did 14 times and decided you're going to get away with it. What they have decided is that because I am who I am, and because my skin is a little lighter, then I can get away with anything. You saw that boy with his knee on George Floyd's neck? Right. Looked right into the camera. New people were videoing. New people were taking pictures. He looked right into the camera and asked to say, you ain't going to do nothing anyway. Mm. And the reason why they can say that is because it's happened so many times over and over and over again where nothing was done. Mm -hmm. But here we are in front of youth. Youth who, who are talented. Youth who really got it going on. You who are special. You who have a heart for God. Young people, I applaud you for just being here. Amen, amen. I applaud you for, for just taking the time out to come by the church sometime. It informs us that we have to remember our creator in the days of our youth while we are young. While we got things going on I used to raise young people when I was in my 30s. I used to run them. Now I don't even want to get out there with them. These young people now are bad to the bone. They can think faster. They come out the room with an iPad and a droid pad. They, they come out the room doing public speaking. They come out the room being bad and bold. It says, remember God. Remember the creator. This word creator means the one who has shaped you. Your shaper. The one who has formed you. The one who has, has fashioned you. Remember your creator. The one who has taken care of you. The one who made heaven and the one who made earth. Remember him. The one who does miracles. Young people, let me just serve you notice, you are a miracle. You, you, you are not an accident. It doesn't matter if you were playing or not. It doesn't matter if your dad is on the scene or not. You are a miracle. You are beautifully, you are wonderfully made. Stop letting TikTok rule your life. Stop being... Stop being determined of who, don't let that, that stuff on social media determine who you are. Thank you for being in the church because in the church you learn who you are. You learn that you have a creator God that walks with you and talks with you. You have a creator God who has a standard that is a standard you ought to hold to. He says, remember your creator, the one who made you, who selected you. This word in the original uh, Hebrew means the one who dispatched you. You didn't have to be here. Some people, parents, try to get rid of them. Whenever my birthday comes around, I celebrate my parents. I'm the oldest, you know. And they could have dumped me on my head. They could have flushed me down the toilet. They could have gotten rid of me. So whenever my birthday comes around, I call them and I say, Mama, thank you for not aborting me. Daddy, thank you for taking care of me. Because they had a choice in the matter. And because they had a choice in the matter, 
They chose to let me live. And for that, I am so grateful. That's why Rosalie Davis has nothing to worry about. Oh, she, I have to remind her sometimes, you have children. You don't have to take care of all that stuff yourself. You have children. How many of you in the room have children? And let me just serve notice on you in case you didn't know it. When you get old, your children are supposed to take care of you. Are you with me? When you get seasoned, when you become old, it's time out for taking care of grown children. Your children ought not be a burden on you. If any burdens are passed out, it ought to be the parents that's a burden. And they ought not be a burden because they've taken care of us. Children ought to climb the highest mountain for mama, daddy, grandmama. For adopted parents. You ought to you ought to do whatever it is for you to do, and you ought to make them so happy. All right. You ought to make them so proud. They ought to be able to brag on you. Let me tell you, the reason why today I can make my mama and daddy so proud is it, not because I've been good. It's because I respected them so much, I wasn't going to do any dirt in their presence. I mean, my respect was so great. Even at 60, I just can't say certain things around my mama. All right. I see children spit in their mama's face. I see children cuss their mama and daddy out. I see children say, oh, lady, get over there and sit down. I, I, but Roscoe, I ain't even trying. It, it won't work in the David's household. That, that, that dog won't hunt. It says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. This word youth means time right now while you're young. It is time before your prime of life. Every boy ought to take care of his mom. That's right. That's right. Whenever there's a threat, little boys rise up automatically to take care of mama. God has given us his very best. He's given us life. And guess what? We ought to give God our very best. Remember the creator in the days of your youth. Mm -hmm. It goes on to say in verse 1 that you need to remember the creator in the days of your youth before difficult times or difficult, difficult days show up. The writer here is telling us that you're going to have some difficult days. Raise your hand if you got up this morning and you had to catch your back and roll over out the bed. Raise your hand if you had to get up this morning and before you got up, you had to think about what position you're going to put your body in in order to get up. We, 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 were, we were on vacation and, and there were some, there were about two 20 some year old, there was one 60 some year old. It's 34 of us. We're on vacation. Sister Davis trying to take pictures and she says stuff like she's dealing with these children here. She says, everybody, everybody who's not tall, get on the floor. I said, we ain't doing that, baby. <laughs> we here celebrating a 70 year birthday. 90% of us are 50, 60, 70, and 80 and above. Now, Sister Davis, you may be able to pop up like that, but we just, you, you get down there and take the picture and shoot up. <laughs> Can you imagine 65 year olds laying on the floor profiling and styling? They may profile and style, but they need six people to help them get up. That's why, that's why when people, when people get aged, they, they, they walk carefully. Say that. They look 10 feet out ahead of them. Yes, and they see where the ground is uneven. All right, now. And they will walk a quarter of a mile around that area to keep them talk, yeah. from walking on uneven ground. Because they know that osteoporosis has set in. They realize that if I break these bones I have, it may take me six years to fully heal. 
See, that's why senior saints are so, they're so wise. They think way out ahead of them. They, they think for, for tomorrow, next week, and next year. And those young folk that pop up and, and walk and fall and get back up. And I break some, I may be broken the rest of my life. We have to understand that it is God that keeps us. It is God that blesses us. And it doesn't matter how educated you are. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It's God that gives you your smarts. It's God that made you get through education. Some people say they graduated magnum cum laude. Summa cum laude. I graduated from high school. Thank you, Lord. And I had the nerve to go to the council and see why I didn't have an honor card. <laughs> Brother Miles, when he got through pulling my grades out from ninth grade to 12th grade, I said, Mr. Russian, you have a nice day, you hear? <laughs> I mean, I graduated from high school. Lord, I thank you for another day. Know, right. And because of Mr. Russian's response in that counselor's room, I have been on a path to success ever since. I said, Mr. Russian, all I need is an opportunity. He said to me, opportunities are not given. You have to take opportunities. You have to make opportunities happen. And I'm looking at the girl that got the honor card. I'm like, they giving her that honor card because of her dad. He's so active in the school system. But let me tell you, it doesn't matter who else gets one. If you don't get one, then you need to focus on what you have done. That, that, was, that was an eye-opener for me. That was in 11th grade. I'm, I'm, I'm preparing to march with my honor card. I'm going to tell you, mama may have some honor cards in her house, but none of them belong to me. That's why I can tell people, when you're down and out, there's still hope. When you think you're not smart enough, there's still hope. And from that day to that, the 12th grade, I was in 12A, the smartest class. From that day to this one, when I went to college, I was on the honor roll the first semester. It's because you have to make up in your mind, number one, you're going to put God first. And number two, you're going to let God regulate your mind and your hope. I used to work for uh, three, 3 o'clock shifts from 3 a.m. to 11 uh, a.m. And I would come in just coming out. Just just coming in from being out. I would show up at three, at, at, at 2.30 for my 3 o'clock shift. And one day, Miss Janice, Miss Janice Simpson pulled me over and she said, look, boy, I'm about 22 years old. She said, look, you can't, you can't drink it all. You can't smoke it all. You can't get it all. You can't spin it all. So you might as well go home, sit yourself down somewhere, get your good night's sleep, and come to work like you ought to come. Changed my life. I found out what six hours of sleep would do. I found out that running on fumes won't make it. God has placed wise people in our lives to teach us some things that we don't have to go through. One boy asked me, he said, well, Leave me alone. I made mistakes. Let me make mistakes. Matter of fact, you made mistakes. So let me make my own mistakes. That was more than 40 years ago. And I'm still watching him make some terrible mistakes. We made mistakes, young people, that you don't have to make. We made mistakes. We've gone down that road. It becomes our responsibility to tell you what God has said and to be wise in what God is doing. You don't have to, you know, it's like a woman who's just so in love. I mean, she's just so madly in love. The whole family trying to tell her, he ain't for you, baby. Know, right. Oh, but she's in love. Oh, I like the way he walks. I like his voice. Oh, we stay up to 3 o'clock in the morning talking on the phone. We, we text it. I heard that women think it's more attractive and more sexually involved when you text each other. Therefore, men don't have to have a rap like I used to have, see? I used to have a rap, Sister Henry. When, when I talked to them, I mean, they were like, oh, yes, yeah, tell me more. 
But they tell me now they like texting, they don't like talking. Therefore, boys and girls, the vocabulary is about this long. And then when they try to be proper, when they go to an interview, they mess that up. Let me tell you, young people, read everything that comes before you. Listen to every wholesome thing that comes with you. We didn't get old ball in the credit just by being dumb. We've gone through some things. We've seen some things. And we know how you ought to do to avoid those things. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. The Bible says the first thing you need to understand there's some terrible days coming. Yes. Remember, remember this God because this God has things in store for you that will benefit you. But I want to warn you, there are some terrible days coming. Young folk, there are some tough, trying times coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You may have it made now, but there are some tough times coming. You're going to have to make some decisions. You're going to have to, you see right now, you just, your only decision is what I'm going to eat. There will come a day when you have to make a decision if I'm going to eat. Or how I'm going to eat. And if I'm going to eat, what sacrifices I have to make to eat. I tell young people, enjoy whoever is buying the bacon and eggs now. Enjoy whoever is buying the juice now. Enjoy whoever is paying for the junk now. Because one of these days, you won't have to buy it and you're not going to want to do it. Difficult days are coming. And he says days, and then he says years. He's saying, not only will you have difficult days, you're going to have some difficult years. Is there anybody in the room that has some difficult years? I mean, you thought God was going to come through this year. You thought God was going to come through next year. You thought God was going to come through next year, and you still having difficult days. But you with the right one. Stay with the Lord. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. He says, because difficult days are drawing near. This word drawing means it's pulling. This, this word drawing means that it's going to attack you. Difficult times are going to attack you. It's going to be pulling you. And you're going to be trying to get away from these difficult days. And I'm talking about some days that could be worse than COVID-19. I'm talking about some days that will ambush you and turn your world upside down. But you got to stay with the Lord. Amen. Amen. He, said, he says that there are some days that are coming in verse number one where you will come to the conclusion, I have no more pleasure. I have no more pleasure. My desires have died out. My values have been cut short. My acceptance of my purpose is no longer around. Difficult days can cause you some psychological issues. But the good thing is, when you stay with the Lord, the Lord will stay in there with you. I don't see, I don't see how people make it without the Lord. I don't see how I made it before I came to the Lord. I mean, stuff is worse now than it ever has been. We think we've come a long way from civil rights. Let me just share with you. The bottom line is we worse off now. At least we had spokespersons. At least we had somebody who could speak intelligently for us. Now we got guys with spin numbers. If you've never been in trouble, ask somebody what that is. We got guys with, with names like SP11456. We need somebody who can stand. Young people, you can stand. You got the great vocabulary. You got the speed in your thinking. You can do what other folk can't do. Just stay with the Lord. Because the day is coming when you say, I have no more pleasure in this. Daddy used to say it like this. He says, he says, growing old is such a good thing, but it sure is inconvenient. He says, growing old, I appreciate it. I thank God for it. He says, growing 
oh, it's such a great thing. God, let me live one more day, one more year, one more hour. But it sure is inconvenience. So if we're growing old, we thank God for it. Talk to the lady, she said, oh, no, I ain't ready to go. I'm going to stay here. I said, I'm not ready to go either, but I don't want to linger around here too long. I don't want somebody to have to help me do everything. I don't want somebody to have to have to walk me to and fro. Yeah, right. Those things may happen. Young people, sooner or later, you're going to become a child all over again. Yeah, right. say say it. Say it. Once an adult, twice, twice a child. Yes, Lord. Your children, now you're a child now, but your children are going to be telling you what to do. Yeah. And you're going to be telling your children the same thing that, that adults are telling you now. I'm your mom. I'm your dad. I'm the one that tells you what to do. Mm -hmm. Your children are going to tell you the same thing. No, you're going here today. You're going to do this today. I'm going I'm to get you up at this time. I'm going to lay you down at this time. Because those days are coming. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Am I putting it in your mind? Those days are coming. Therefore, don't make enemies out of everybody you meet. All right. Because some people don't have family that's going to do for them. And the neighbor will take care of you. The friend will take care of you. Somebody, somebody will see you cross the street and they will stop traffic to help the senior saint cross the street. God has a way of sheltering you and keeping you and blessing you even though the natural forces of life take place. Every now and then, I want to get up. And in the morning times, this little lot gets stiffer than ever. I mean, in the morning time, I can hear the inside of me talking to the outside of me. <laughs> brother Tony, just keep waking up in the morning, Brother Tony. Sooner or later, you ain't going to be able to roll over out the bed and pop up and jump up. I take this arm, put it here. This leg. And swing it. And once I get it halfway on the floor, I got to use the momentum from this leg to get the other leg out there. And now and then, I know I'm not a metal man. I know my body doesn't have metal in it. But see, every now and then, the inside of my body says, sticks. And don't mention the back. I mean, you got to stretch before you get out. Stretch once you get out. You gotta touch, try to touch a toe. I mean, life will give you a raw deal. You gotta stay with the Lord, trust Him, and watch what He does. Because there will come a day where you have no pleasure. The good thing about being a, young, a youth is found in chapter two, verse two. I'm sorry, verse two. In your youth, you will have pleasure. In your youth, you will have the sun and the light. In your youth, you'll be able to see the moon and the stars, and the clouds won't come back after the rain. In your youth. That means that you will have good sight. I don't wear glasses because they're in style. I wear glasses so I can see. All right. I hear you. But young people, they buy glasses because they're in style. They, they get the colors that match their clothes, and, and they, they can change from teardrops to big old over, oversized glasses, and, and they can just brag about, I got the latest top style of glasses, and, and I got a name brand pair. I don't wear glasses because I want to be stylish, because these are not stylish. These are for function. They so I can get up and see. And then if the phone rings, I got to grab them before I grab the phone. <laughs> but young people, young people, young people have no problem with seeing. In verse 3, he says that young people have no worries about the house. Look at what he says. Young people have no worries about the house. He says that you are not the keeper of the house, so you don't have to tremble. You don't have to. You don't have to look at your caller ID when bill collectors are calling. You don't have to worry about who's on the outside and whether or not they're gonna come on the inside. 
Young people got it made. It says that, that, that you, you don't have to worry about these things because you have clear sight. But when you're old, verse 3 says, when you're old, darkness set in. Your vision gets dim. You tremble in your own house. Let me tell you, I tell Sister David sometimes, I say, honey, it's time for us to go in. When I grew up, they used to talk about how when the, light, the street light comes on, it's time for young folk to come in, children to come in. Well, I was so far in the country, we didn't have a street light. So when it got dark, we had to go in. And now here I am, 60 years old, and now the street light comes out, I'm getting my wife, my children, and everybody else and bring them in the house. Because after dark, some things going on that, that has never gone on before, that we've never seen before. Can't you see Sister Richard walking outside big and bad down the, the main street in downtown and young folk just clowning? Just better get her old self in the house and sit down somewhere. You got to get to a point where you know your limitations. The Bible says when you old, you tremble even in your own house. We got to watch unfriendly gunfire now. You can be in your house, minding your own business, watching uh, watching Cartwright or something, or Bonanza, and all of a sudden somebody can shoot through there, and you trembling in your own house. Right. Young people don't have a, a care in the world about it. They, they get scared after they hear the gunshot. That could be too late. Whereas a seasoned saint is thinking, am I positioning myself in the right spot to go to sleep so I can wake up in the morning? Back home, my little small town, it was 12,000 folk when I left in 1985. Now it's 9,000. And the, the renegades have taken over. Now mama, mama barely walks as it is, but she tells me from time to time she drop to the floor and lay between the bricks. Lay between the windows. Because when you're in your own house, you're not safe sometimes. And you gotta understand, if you're gonna be kept, even in your own house, it's gonna take God to keep you. He talks about the fact that you, come, you become weak. He talks about the fact that your teeth is grinding no more. The reason why your teeth are not grinding anymore is because you ain't got much teeth. <laughs> Young folk, there will come a day where the dentist is going to say, we got to get rid of this one, this one, this one, and then this one. And it's my understanding that people take them out and set them in the water when they get ready to go to bed at night. So when they get ready, get ready to eat their evening snack, they have to gum their food to swallow it. Young people got it made. Eating soft food has become a thing for the senior saints. Say that. That's right. In verse number five, it talks about the old, the elderly. They are afraid of heights. You can't pay an elderly person to get on a ladder. They have terror in the street. The regular part of life that they once knew is no more. What the, what the writer said in verse number five is death is on the way. Death is around the corner. I am convinced that I got more years behind me than I have before me, so I got to at least try to act right. All right, all right. I, got, I got 60 years plus behind me. And if I have 60 years plus behind me, I got to try to act, act, at least act right. That's why when people get 60 and 65, they start going back to church. They start trying to get their will together. And some of them won't do a will because they think if you write a will, you're going to die tomorrow. You have to understand that we need to make sure we stay with the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you're 100, you need the Lord. Look at verse number 6. It says, one of these days, your silver cord will fail you. One of these days, your golden bowl will fail you. One of these days, your pitcher will fail you, your pitcher as a water pitcher. One of these days, your wheel will fail you. Now let me back up. Your silver cord is your spine. Yeah, right. You have back issues. Yes, Lord. 
You have back is your spine. Your your golden bowl will fail you. Your golden yeah. bowl is your brain. Yeah, you right. How many of you gone in one room and then looked at looked around in the room trying to determine why I came in this room? Yeah. <laughs> you right. right about that. One of these days, your picture, your picture is your heart. One of these days, your heart will fail. One of these days, your wheel will fail. Your will is your veins and your arteries that lead to and from your heart. Verse 7 just lays it out. And verse 7 says, you will return to the dust. We just fine looking dust. We work out, we, we just dust. We eat what we want to eat, we just dust. Verse 7 says, one of these days, you will be dust. You will go back to the earth, the dust of the earth. You will go back to the ground. That's why the preacher says when he gets to the cemetery, or when he had pronounced the body totally in, the two preachers says, ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. And earth to earth. We're going to get to that point. If Jesus tarry, if Jesus doesn't show up soon, one of these days we're going to get out of here. Young people, prepare yourself now for your future. Everybody ought to have a church. Everybody ought to have a church home. Everybody ought to have a pastor that can speak into their lives. Everybody ought to have a doctor. Everybody ought to have a lawyer. Everybody ought to have a friend. You need to prepare life now because folk will let you down. And the only way to really prepare is to trust God. First of all, he says, all is vanity. Everything is vanity. In other words, all our stuff is just vain and useless. All of our stuff will leave us or we will leave it. All of our stuff is not even worth having when it comes to having God. When you compare God to your stuff, you ought to choose God instead of your stuff. When you compare God to your family, you ought to choose God rather than your family. When you compare God to your friends, you need to choose God rather than your friends. When you compare God to your degree, you need to choose God rather than your degree. Verse number nine, verses eight and nine talk about the preacher having wisdom. It says that when, you, when you're listening to the preacher, listen to his wisdom. Verse 9 says, the preacher has taught the people knowledge. The preacher ponders and he sorts out a set of orders. He looks to God for what he has to say. It says the preacher, in verse 9, seeks to find acceptable words. Sometimes sometimes the preacher has to use extra words, Sister Carter. I mean, I, I can't just come to Sister Carter any old way, you know. I got <laughs> I got to pray about it. I, I got to come, you know, you know, Sister Carter got some words that she can say back to me. So I got to make sure I say the right words at the right time in the right way because I don't want to leave there totally dejected. So the preacher has to say acceptable words. And, and when he says these words, these words are well driven into the heart of man. Says... Follow the words of the wise. Verses 12 and 14, and I'll leave you alone. Look at that, I'll preach the whole, 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 whole chapter. He says, this is the conclusion of the matter. The wise writer said, now out of all I've said, said to you, out of all the things I've gone through, everything I've said, being wise, having wisdom, Vanity is vanity. Stuff is nothing but vanity. Our looks are nothing but vanity. Our shapes are nothing but vanity. Our hairstyles are nothing but vanity. All is vanity. Then he says, this is the conclusion of the matter. Number one, the conclusion of the matter is to fear God and keep his commandments. This word fear means to reverence him, to respect him. The conclusion of all I've said for the last three minutes all I said was to respect God, fear him, adore him, and keep his commandments. Just follow the book. Say what the book says. Do what the book says. Act what the book says. Stick to the book. 
The second thing he said, the conclusion doesn't matter, is that give God your all. <clears throat> give God your very best. Don't be sucking and jiving. There are some people today that know they ought to be in church. There are some people who have gifts that they can make the church grow faster and make the church grow longer, but they'd rather sit on their hands, sit on their gifts, and watch the church struggle. There are people who have money. They can do great things for the Lord, but they rather do other things with their money. There are some people who God can use to do great, mighty, many, many things, but they have chose to watch other folk work and they won't work. It says, give God all you have because tomorrow is not promised to you. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is leaving today. If you don't believe tomorrow is leaving today, let me just tell you, we have to prepare children for today, but we need to prepare them for tomorrow also. I can appreciate children standing here and reciting scripture, singing the word of God, playing musical instruments, because we getting out of here, y'all. We, I don't care how you look, I don't care how you build, sooner or later you got to leave here. Amen. Amen. So give God all you, don't wait until tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Philip Baby song, sings this song, back in my day, Philip Baby sung this song, he says tomorrow may be too late. Give yourself to God today, do all you can today, for tomorrow may be too late. And people need to stop letting their friends convince them not to walk with God. Mm. Not to do their very best for God. Do all you can for God now. Because when you go, people won't have to lie for you. Mm. Let me tell you, when you're living, folk will lie on you. Mm. When you're dead, folk will lie for you. Yeah. One was sitting there, she was bereaving, her husband was in the casket. The children were sitting next to her. The preacher got up and he started talking about this is a great man in the community. He did so many great things. And I know he's a Christian man. The woman stood up and says, hold it right there, Reverend. And she unctioned her little boy and said, go up there and see if that's your dad in that castle. <laughs> oh, my God. We have to understand, we got to give God our very best today. In chapter, chapter, in verses 12 and 14, it says, God will judge every work that we do. Everything. God will judge it. So you can sit back and let life pass you by. God deals with us with sins of omission and sins of commission. God's going to deal with us one day. God will judge every secret thing about you. Even your thoughts, God is judging. Even your life, God is judging. What you do with your money, God is judging. How you approach people, God is judging. How your attitude is, God is judging. Every thought that runs through your mind, God is judging how you handle that thought. Amen. Amen. God is judging even your good and your evil. God is a judge. You see, some people hide and they duck and run from the preacher, run, run from the mission sisters. <laughs> but God is the one that sees all. God is the one that knows all. And I pray today that somebody is convicted that God is watching and God doesn't have to make a list and check it twice. God is all knowing. He knows what we do. He knows how we handle things. God is watching. Jesus the Christ was the greatest example of who God is. He is the visible image of the invisible God. His name is Jesus. He gave us grace amazing. And Jesus has set a standard for us to follow. And that is holiness. That is purity. That is walking with the God. The God who made us. The God who created us. The God who has blessed us. That same Jesus became a ransom for you and for me. He died on Calvary. 
a voluntary death. He died for you and he died for me. Early that third day morning, he rose from the dead so that you can be saved, so you can go to heaven, so you can live right, so you can live holy. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. If you never tried him, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. You ought to try Jesus. Remember God. Honor him. Respect him. Submit to him. And if you've never tried Jesus, this is your moment, this is your opportunity to try him. Just bow your head and repeat this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul in Jesus' name. We believe if you honestly pray this prayer, you're now born again. We believe that you are on your way to heaven. If you're in this room or on the broadcast and, and you need a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where he is the main attraction. Everybody needs a church home. If that's you, why don't you come right down this aisle and, and don't worry about who will watch you. Because you can't allow imperfect people to keep you away from a perfect God. The door is open. Will you come? Yes, come. Yes, Lord. Come on to Jesus. Come on to him. He will. He will wait in heaven. Trust Jesus. Trust Jesus. Oh, come. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on to Jesus. Trust Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. church is praying, someone is making a decision to give their life to Christ, to obey God, to fear Him and respect Him, or to join the new beginning church. Amen. I want to thank God for who He is and what He's already done. Thank God for blessing us one more time allowing us to be a part of his service. Amen. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. It is an opportunity to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. This is the last Sunday in August. And I've said before and I say again, during the month of August, June, July, and August, all finances go to the New Beginning Church, including the love offering. So if you were going to give love offering to Pastor Davis, this is a good moment to, for you to give to the New Beginning Church. All offerings will be going to the New Beginning Church. Now next Sunday is September. What does that mean? Next Sunday is September. Next Sunday is not August. So starting back in September, you will feel free to give your love offering. We have gone through the entire summer with the love offering going to the New Beginning Church. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for those who will give. 
We thank you, Lord, for money. We thank you for income. We thank you for increase. We ask you to bless every giver and bless every gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. If you want to give electronically, you can do so by giving by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you need an envelope, raise your hand and you will be served. Raise your hand way up in the air and you will be served if you need an envelope. Yes, Lord. If you want to mail in your offering or your gifts, mail it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. He has done great things for you. Yes, Lord. Bless this side to stand. Follow first the questions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's ties, also in sacrifice. He has done great things. He's done great things, great things.
Music family, Vivian Islaha, Al Brinson, Toronto Miller, Andrew Rodriguez, Omar Galvan, Ed, Brandon and family, Jacqueline Torres, Dorothy Sellers, Billy Banks, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Raymond Alfred Jr., Laborers for the Harvest and World Peace. Thank you. to come up here please I have been teaching the boys and girls I want them to be able to stand along and we have to practice different things and so Jacob was asking me something while we were getting ready to sing a song and I thought he was wanting to go down and sit down and I was like Jacob go back up there so even though the boys and girls have to practice I have to practice too and since we did not practice this part this morning that's why I forgot his part but listen, so I'm apologizing to Jacob. Jacob, can you say your part right now? <laughs> Okay, we're going to make sure that he's out front the next time, okay, because I really, really forgot, so thank you, Jacob. But I am just so excited and so proud of all the boys and girls and parents. I'm going to tell you what I told the students this morning. In school, I'm expecting all A's, and I need report cards. So would you please make sure your boys and girls uh, uh, take a picture of their report card and send it to me. All right, don't forget. Thank you. Amen. Whenever you mess up, that's when you all apologize. Amen. If you mess up in public, you all apologize. In public. If you mess up in private, you keep it private. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jacob, for being understanding with the, the seasoned lady. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God has, has blessed us again. That's our first time visiting us to stand and say hello to us. If you are visiting with us for the first time, please stand. And say hello to us. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. Amen. Thank God. Can you say hello to us and tell us how you got here? Well, I know you got here in a car, but who invited you? Oh, I didn't. I got here on a plane. On a plane. <laughs> well, my, my, my. I want to see if there's a landing strip right out there, too. <laughs> Your name is what? Clara Baby. Clara, 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 Clara Baby. Baby. Amen. Uh -huh. This is my brother, Big C. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. And I'm from Greenville, Mississippi. What? what? <laughs> and I am a member of the Unity Faith Church under the leadership of Pastor Jackie and Lady Betty Davis. Amen. And I enjoyed the message and it's an encouraging message to the young people. Amen. Thank you so much. And whenever I'm in the area, I will come again. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You say you're a sweet sister? Yes. Let, let the record reflect. You are much prettier than he is. <laughs> I mean, you are gorgeous. <laughs> Amen. And she's from Greenville, Mississippi. Yes. That is that is 25 miles west of Indianola, Mississippi. Amen. <laughs> 25 miles west down 82. Right at 82 and, and Highway 1. Amen. Thank you so much for, for being a part of our, our service today. As we are approaching uh, school for HISD uh, and other schools have already started, we want to make sure that we lift our young people in prayer. So if you're in school, come on down and meet me at the altar. If you're in school or have started school or going to start school, and uh, certainly, you need prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. So meet me down. If you're in preschool, elementary school, junior high, high school, college, come on down. Okay, y'all come on. Come on. Amen. Father, 
Father God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come now with these young people. Lord, we thank you for their hearts for you. We thank you for their talents. We thank you, Lord, for blessing them. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for keeping them in church. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us, Father God, to always give them the right focus. Bless us to always give them the right attention. And bless them, Father God, to be receptive of your word, your will, and your way. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless them to honor, to respect, and remember you, God, as their creator. And bless them as they go, in and out, back and forth, in the community, in the school system. Lord, we ask you to bless them that no danger will come upon them. We pray, Father God, that you give them photogenic memories. Bless them, Father God, that their schoolwork will become priority. That they will have no worry about danger. That they don't have to shudder. They don't have to have terror on their hearts. That they don't have to tremble, Father God, as they meet and greet people. Lord, we ask you to protect them as only you can. Bless their hearts and bless their mind to be serious about the work of the Lord. Bless their hearts and bless their mind, Father God, that they will be serious about their schoolwork. Bless them to be living examples to their peers, Father God. Bless that they will not give in to peer pressure. Bless them to always do that which is right. Bless them, Father God, that as they go in, they will be respectful. Bless every teacher, every principal, every dean. Bless every assistant. Bless every janitor. Bless our school system. And now, Lord, we pray that you arrest the mind and the hearts of the superintendents. That they will lead in a righteous way. That they will be considerate of others. That they will do what is best for these children. And bless these children, Father God, to not have to worry about things in their homes. About things around them. And bless them to be about your business. Lord, we thank you for the victory. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. It's in the mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thank God. church. That's the church that we will be going to as he's had death in his family. So we want to lift up Pastor W.R. W.R. Bell. Amen. Amen. 
Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we thank you, Father God, for intelligent young people. We thank you, Father God, for mindful young people. We thank you, Lord God, for manable young people. We thank you, Father God, that these young people will be great and they are already great. We pray, Father God, that you bless us as we leave this place. Keep us, keep our mind, keep our hearts, keep our veins and our arteries. Lord, keep us, Father God, that we will continue to walk with you and be mindful of who you are and glorify your name. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join in by saying, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. You are dismissed.